Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, we'll be talking about a blockchain project that's called PeeChain. PeeChain is a very new project that only hit the markets a week ago. But because of the market crash, it's actually in a very unusual spot where its current price is actually significantly lower than its opening price, over 25% lower, even though it just hit the markets a week ago. So potentially, it's at a big discount. But as I took a look at this project closer, I was very impressed with the technology and I think it has a lot of potential. So I want to introduce this project to you guys tonight. To learn more about PeeChain, keep watching this video. The person in this picture is Dr. Feng Chao. He's a very impressive person in the China blockchain scene, and he's also the co-founder and the chief scientist of the PeeChain project. Dr. Feng Chao was the inventor of the first international blockchain patent in China. He's also the first co-founder of China Ledger, which is the most influential blockchain alliance of China. He's also the chief scientist of Blockchain Application Committee in China, and he successfully accomplished the first blockchain-based asset earning rights transfer in the world in September of 2016. He is also the ex-chief scientist of Internet Finance and the co-chair of the Patent Review Board in IBM Research China, and he has won the IBM Global Technical Achievement Awards three times before. He has also written 22 papers in top conferences and has over 30 international patents to his name. So before we even begin looking at the project, I'm already very excited to see what technology this project will be offering. PeeChain describes itself as the first multi-chain system that supports EVM in the world. EVM here stands for the Ethereum Virtual Machine. Let me try to explain to you what this project is all about. Traditional blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum are singular chain models, which means that the dApps that are built on the blockchain are built in the blockchain and use the computational power of the blockchain. So if the computational power of the blockchain is say 1000 transactions per second, for example, it doesn't matter how many dApps the blockchain has, the total power of the blockchain is still only 1000 transactions per second. That 1000 transactions per second just gets divided up between the dApps. So the more dApps are built on the blockchain, the slower each dApp will function. So that becomes a scalability problem. A multi-chain model is where the dApps are built on the blockchain, but they provide their own computational power and have very little burden on the actual blockchain. Therefore, the transaction speeds of the blockchain is actually the addition of all the transaction speeds of all the dApps. So in the case of this diagram where I have four dApps, if each of the dApps had a transaction speed of 1000 transactions per second, then the total transaction speed of the blockchain would be 4000 transactions per second. Now imagine if you have 1000 dApps being built on the blockchain, that would be 1000 times 1000 which would be a million transactions per second. That's how EOS and other projects can boast to have potentially fast speeds of 1 million transactions per second. This multi-chain model will be a very familiar model for those who have seen our previous videos. You have to understand this model if you want to invest in blockchain protocols because it's one of the most popular scaling solutions these days. Now, multi-chain blockchains usually just stop here and this is the final architecture of the blockchain usually. But PeeChain goes one step further by introducing a cross-link features to other blockchains, example Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. Those were the examples they gave in their white paper. Now, cross-linking or interoperability is not actually intuitive to blockchain as a, as a technology. Many blockchains live in isolation. For example, if a shop accepts Ethereum as payment, you can't go in there and pay with Bitcoin because they are not compatible or interoperable. But with PeeChain, you can pay with PeeChain even though they accept an ERC20 token. The way PeeChain does it is that it is linked to what is known as the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine is a technology on the Ethereum blockchain that tests and runs all the smart contracts before releasing it as a finished product. So whilst Ethereum as a project as a whole, the Ethereum blockchain has a lot of problems. For example, the consensus algorithm has issues, the ledger has issues, etc. But think of the Ethereum blockchain in layers. Whilst many of the layers in Ethereum is problematic like the consensus, the fact is there are some layers that do have good technology and the virtual machine is one of those layers. The virtual machine of Ethereum is actually a very good technology. 
One example to illustrate how the virtual machine is a good technology is that the virtual machine is compatible or actually designed for the programming language Solidity. Solidity, unlike the traditional programming language like Java, Solidity was designed specifically for blockchain, for cryptocurrency. So when you use Solidity to make a smart contract for a transaction, naturally there will be a feature in that smart contract that will require gas. That's why you need Ether to do transactions. But smart contracts that are coded with Java do not necessarily have the feature that needs gas. Furthermore, the Ethereum virtual machine also currently holds the world's largest numbers of smart contracts. So, for example, Ethereum currently has about 1,000 dApps built on it. In comparison, the other good projects like NEO, for example, will only host anywhere between 20 to 50 dApps. So, it's a very far difference. So, EVM currently holds the world's largest numbers of smart contracts. So, if you were a new platform and you wanted to have a cross-chain facility that would be relevant to other blockchain projects, the very first technology that you really want to be relevant to will be Ethereum, or in this case, not the whole Ethereum, just the most useful part of Ethereum, which is the virtual machine. Now, by being relevant to the Ethereum virtual machine, it means that Ethereum smart contracts can be run using P-Chain tokens as the gas. So instead of using Ether, you can use P-Chain tokens as gas. And the unspoken thing here is that if Ethereum dApps ever wanted to jump ship off Ethereum to a newer and better platform, the natural choice then would be P-Chain because it is faster and more compatible. Now, there are other multi-chain projects out there. P-Chain is not the only one, but P-Chain is the only one that will support EVM. Also, there are current other single-chain projects out there that support EVM, but P-Chain is the only one that will offer scalability on such a scale. The scaling of P-Chain isn't just in the multi-structure chain structure. They will also use sharding as an additional scaling model. So sharding is basically splitting the work up into smaller portions for quicker processing. Sharding in P-Chain occurs on two levels. Firstly, it occurs at the structural level. So the very concept of side chains in itself is partitioning, is sharding. And the main chain will provide registration, search storage and deposit services, while the side chains will provide a different service of the specific business logic. The next level of sharding is within each side chain itself. So within each side chain, the nodes of the side chain are further split up into different types of nodes known as the execution group and the governance group. And the work of transaction is then split into different parts for different groups to work on, thus ensuring a much quicker transaction overall. The consensus algorithm that is used by the system will be proof of stake. The last piece of tech that I want to introduce to you about P-Chain is their smart contracts. So before smart contracts, before Ethereum, there was Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't use smart contracts at the moment and is what we call a closed system, meaning that any data used for any transaction is created and maintained within the Bitcoin ecosystem itself. But with Ethereum and the introductions of smart contracts, the system, the blockchain system then became an open system. What I mean by open system is this. Because a smart contract is a contract, so if I give you an example, it means uh, if you were to finish mowing my lawn, I will automatically deposit $50 into your account. So that's the smart contract. But for the smart contract to function, the smart contract needs to receive information from outside the system. The information outside the system here is when do you finish mowing my lawn? That is not a blockchain technology. That is an outside information that triggers the smart contract. So the way that Ethereum currently receives its data is through what is known as the Oracle or the link to the outside world. But the problem with blockchain projects currently is that there is no set standard for Oracles. So different projects get different data from uh, different quality data from different sources. And even, even within a single blockchain like Ethereum, the quality of data can greatly affect the standard of the smart contract. In P-Chain, they will use an AI system to help to generate smart data. So not just smart contract, but smart data for the smart contracts. It's basically a technology that combines AI and blockchain and is called the knowledge graph. The implication of this is that the smart contract can then be used to manage big data because it can process large amounts of information accurately. 
Big data is another key term in the blockchain space currently and the concept that you should be aware of if you are a token investor. If you want to learn more about big data, do check out the first two minutes of our Zebi project review to learn more. Uh, but I think big data is an important concept for us to understand because it's going to be huge for the next wave of blockchain projects. So personally, I think that the tech of this project is sounding very exciting. You know how many other people like to say that every new platform that comes out is the new Ethereum killer? So Cardano is the Ethereum killer, NEO is the Ethereum killer. I've never said that of any project before, but I actually think that PeeChain could potentially be the Ethereum killer that everyone is talking about. The reason I say that PeeChain can be the Ethereum killer is because all the other third generation platforms they are better in technology, but they are different in technology from Ethereum. So they can at best attract new businesses away from Ethereum. But even if you starve Ethereum of any new business, the fact is that Ethereum already has like a thousand dApps built on it, while others are still struggling with 20 to 50. So it's going to take a very long time for any other blockchain to catch up to Ethereum, much less to try and kill Ethereum. But PeeChain isn't just better in technology, it is also compatible with the Ethereum technology, which means that not only can it attract the new business away from Ethereum, it can actually attract the current business on Ethereum as well. The thousand dApps that are currently built on Ethereum, PeeChain can attract them to move away from Ethereum and be built on PeeChain. Because Ethereum is currently struggling with scalability, interoperability, and sustainability. There's quite a number of problems with the Ethereum blockchain. And a lot of ERC20 projects actually want to move off Ethereum, but because they are programmed in Solidity, which is a very specific programming language for Ethereum, and they are also built with an Ethereum structure, it's very hard for them to change to a different blockchain with different technology. So I think that the reason a lot of them stay with Ethereum is because they have no choice, not because they want to. So imagine if now you have an option of PeeChain where it's perfectly compatible with uh, EVM and the whole Ethereum, which means that any block debt that is being built on the Ethereum blockchain can safely move over to PeeChain without any risk or without any hassle. And then they will have suddenly a 1000 um, times faster transaction or throughput. Why wouldn't you move to PeeChain? So if PeeChain ever achieves that, it will become very big, very fast and very suddenly. Of course, we have to take everything in the right perspective, and all of this is still in the conceptual phase. So PeeChain as a project don't have what we call a minimum viable product or MVP yet. Okay, um, So until someone has an MVP, it's very hard to say that their technology is actually viable. It's all still conceptual. Okay, But some parts of the technology, like the multi-chain model, for example, is already being used by many other projects, and that is a very achievable technology. And furthermore, the chief scientist and co-founder of this project is Dr. Feng Chao, whom we covered earlier. So if anyone can pull this off, it will be him and his team. Talking about the team, this is the team behind the project and their advisors. It's overall a very small team, but it's a team that is very uh, heavy in the tech's expertise. Their CEO and chief scientist is Dr. Feng Chao, as we already covered. The head of architecture is Stephen Lu, who has previously worked for leading international companies such as SAP Shanghai Lab. Uh, he has a lot of experience in software design, cluster deployment, big data storage, and more. Frank Ma is their in charge of blockchain storage and optimization. He has over 10 years of working experience in global top 500 companies with focus on database systems and distributed system. He also holds a few US patents in database and he has a lot of experience in system development and performance optimization. So you can go through the rest of the team's resume in your own time, but it does come across as a very competent team. One thing I will stop to address here is that uh, Another YouTube video flagged their team's resume, this resume, as a red flag because he noticed that the names on the website was different from the names in the white paper. So for example, on the website it says Stephen Lu, but in the white paper it says Hao Jin Lu. On the website it says uh, Frank Ma, but in their white paper it says Zhang Feng Ma. And also he pointed out the fact that Stephen Lu on LinkedIn had no profile pictures of friends or links. And so he felt that was a very suspicious uh, red flag for the project. To explain that, the names are actually the names of the same people, uh, whichever source you get it from. Okay, um, The last names are exactly the same. 
It's just that the white paper uses their Chinese names, but the website uses their English names. And that's understandably so, because the English website is a place of interaction for English readers, and English names are so much easier to use and remember for English readers. The white paper, though, is a legal document, and as any legal document, you need to put your full name, which for them is actually their Chinese name. So it's just like for me on YouTube, I introduce myself as Dan and you know me as Dan. But I actually have a Chinese name that I don't tell you, but I use my Chinese name in legal documents because that's part of my birth certificate. But for me on YouTube, when I'm interacting with people who mainly speak English, introducing myself as Dan then makes a lot more sense. And even though I don't tell you my Chinese name, it doesn't mean I am a scam. Does that make sense? Also, in terms of the LinkedIn profiles, if you look at the LinkedIn profiles for Stephen Liu, his entire resume is there, all the places his work is there, and it's an accurate profile and resume. The reason he doesn't have much friends is because you got to remember that these guys are China Chinese and they don't use LinkedIn that much. Um, so I think that's why he doesn't have links for it. He, he probably created it just for the purpose of this website. So I might be wrong, guys, but this team seems pretty legit to me. They have a lot of capital firms invested in them and some of the capital firms are familiar names to us like Talk, uh, Venture Capitals and these are firms that historically have chosen winning blockchain projects like Icon to invest in. As I always say, the best crypto YouTuber is still not a professional but capital investors are professionals who will invest millions of dollars into the projects. Okay? They know how to look for projects and they are very careful um, in terms of their selection. So for me as a crypto YouTuber or a token investor, to see one or two capital investors invested in the project is very reassuring. But in this case, to see over 10 capital investors investing in a single project at such an early phase that is actually very impressive and reassuring to me. Their media articles are not that impressive. If you were to click on the links for each of these media articles, it actually brings you to articles that Dr. Feng Chao uh, has written or is an article on Dr. Feng Chao and his general involvement with blockchain and China. Okay, um, he, it gives you the impression that he is definitely a very prominent person in the China blockchain scenes. But these links are actually not about PeeChain or a lot of these links are not actually about PeeChain project directly. So I think it's a bit misleading. Okay, this kind of a very loose, um, misleading media links seems to be a growing bad habit in many blockchain projects and I'm personally not a fan of it. This is their roadmap. The roadmap is quite sparse. I mean, it only has four major updates for the next one and a half years, but all the updates are major milestones to look out for. The next major update will be the deal drop stage in October of 2018. And this is when we will see the completion of the PeeChain core system and the launching of the testnet online. So this is the major milestone that I think a lot of potential investors will be holding out for because with an MVP, then you can prove that your technology is viable. The last milestone on this map is the ocean stage in September of 2019 and that will introduce what is known as the start of the Knowledge Graph Blockchain Alliance. So Knowledge Graph was like their oracle to uh, collect accurate information with the AI and I think that what they are trying to do is to build something similar like ecosystem like how for example, Neo, Ontology, and The Key, etc., are currently pooling together their resource to build a big identification database. So in the same way, these guys are trying to build uh, a common database for the knowledge graph to pool information for the smart contracts. As I mentioned earlier in one of our previous reviews, I think this is the way forward for blockchain projects. Blockchain protocols and platforms need to stop thinking of themselves as isolated technology with their own individual data banks. They need to start seeing themselves as part of a bigger blockchain ecosystem or network and learn how to communicate and share their information with other projects so that together they can build a bigger and more accurate database that will be more attractive to users. So I think that PeeChain in trying to build an ecosystem of the Knowledge Graph Blockchain Alliance is definitely going in the right direction. This is what um, These are the kind of signs that tell you that a project is going to be very big in the future. Finally, ending with where we started, let's take a look at their price. The token is currently so young that the websites don't even list their market cap yet. 
but their ICO hard cap was set at 20 million, which they hit, and that was about 30% of the total supply. So then we can assume that the current market cap is probably sitting somewhere between 20 to 60 million. That's still quite a big range, to be honest. I mean, if this project was 20 million, I would say it's criminally low for a project of this potential. If this project was 60 million, it's still, it's still kind of lowish, but I would say it's a little bit risky for something that is still quite far out from getting an MVP out. But nonetheless, generally speaking, protocols or platforms are a good investment currently, especially the ones that aim to be a center of an ecosystem. And furthermore, the tech of this project does sound very promising to me indeed. The market currently is so low that really almost any project, not just this one, uh, is sounding like a very good buy. So as investors, I guess we are spot for choice in that sense if you still have any fiat to invest. Personally, I like to take advantage of big market crashes like this one to load up on the bigger market cap coins, okay? Coins like um, NEO or VeChain, for example, because those bigger coins are more stable and we rarely see such a big dip. So when it's such a big dip like now, I tend to load up on the bigger coins. And then when the market is greener, I turn my attention to smaller altcoins who then have a better choice of return. But that's just me, and this is definitely not professional advice, just me sharing with you my thoughts and how I do things. Always do your own research and make your own decisions. So that's it for me, guys, and my thoughts of P-Chain. Uh, this is a very promising project that I'm definitely going to keep my eye on. Let me know what you think of P-Chain and how you are approaching the recent market crash as well. Have a great day ahead, guys. Don't stay at the red market too much. Go out, have a beer, and enjoy your life. If you like this video, give us that like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys again very soon.